Welcome back. So you have now gone through an entire course on data analytics and social sciences, and we have learned really a lot and covered quite a lot. And what you can understand is that this is really a bird's eye view of the field. It's a fast growing field, it's a fastly developing, there's many different aspects, there's many different uh, elements and perspectives to it. Um, and, and really what you get from this course is a basic understanding of what is going on, um, what kind of models are out there, what kind of questions can we ask with them. Um, and it can be a good starting point for you if you want to do some analysis for yourself to identify what might be interesting data and interesting methods to look at. And then you read up further on these specific approaches and, and you need to delve a little bit deeper into the material if you really want to apply it. And I think the syllabus gives you a good um, handle on some relevant literature that might be helpful in that um, and, and you can go from there. So in this video, I just want to briefly go over what we did and but also importantly what we did not cover. So you have some idea what is going on and where this course is placed. Um, and then that is really to sort of wrap up, wrap up the course as a whole. Um, so what have we covered? Now, I would argue that we have covered really a lot. So this course might actually be a little bit overwhelming in terms of the material, and I'm very aware of that. I have thrown many, many different methods, different data sets, uh, different commands at you. Um, for you to explore and work with. Um, and I have made that hopefully a little bit manageable by not asking you a lot of technical detail in exams or uh, ask a lot of original code in R, but really try to focus on the basic ideas of these methods and, and the basic implementation in R. So you have really learned a lot. You have learned basic skills in R and Markdown. Yeah, you've learned how to work with data in R, how to do basic analysis, how to do visualizations, etc. We have focused a lot on visualization actually. So the first block was all about visualization and in later blocks we often made different plots. You are, you are really quite familiar now with ggplot uh, and how this can be used. You've learned basic regression, classification and dimension reduction techniques, right? So we, um, Regression and classification is what we focused on in block, block two. Dimension reduction is what we focus on in block two. And they can apply to, be applied to all kinds of applications. And you've learned about the distinction between and examples of both supervised and unsupervised machine learning methods. Supervised where we know the correct classification or the correct, um, um, uh, sorry, scaling for regression. Uh, unsupervised and we don't know yet what the right uh, classification is and then different methods to sort of identify these patterns in the data. And we've also in between the lines learned to look at different types of data. We've looked at survey data uh, where we have individual respondents and their answers to questions. We've looked at country level data where we have statistical data on countries. Um, and finally we have looked at text uh, as quantitative data and how we can look at this. There's a few things, a few issues that you really need to watch out for if you use this material now in any future applications. So things that we covered only moderately that I mentioned often between the lines but that you should be really careful with that this was not really in-depth discussed and that you need to be aware of what it means. So there's an important distinction between models that are based on theory and models that are, not, that are more exploratory. So we often have a theoretical argument why we expect a particular variable to be important in explaining say war, or conflict or democracy. Um, and we have particular ideas why some politicians might use certain strategies and not other strategies. Um, so we can develop a model around these expectations. And then you're often talking about uh, regression models or um, uh, other classification algorithms, or sometimes we are looking for patterns that we expect to see in advance also when we do, for example, factor analysis or cluster analysis. And then there is the models where we have more a post hoc and afterwards interpretation of the model output, where we don't really know what we expect to find. We put all the data in the algorithm and we look at which patterns the algorithm identifies. And this is really what is the core of this unsupervised methods. In social sciences, model-based arguments are really the more common domain. In data science, machine learning, this post-hoc interpretation is really more common. Yeah? So 
be aware that there is a difference there with what is sort of the prior expectation. If you talk to social scientists, they expect theoretical expectations and models to test those. If you talk to a data scientist, they generally do not. Secondly, um, we have not really dealt much with uncertainty and statistical inference. So often we have uh, a data analysis on a sample, but we are really trying to draw conclusions about a wider population. And there's all kinds of theory um, around what the uncertainty is of, of drawing these conclusions and how to estimate those. Um, for many of the techniques that we studied in this course, um, you do not get this inferential information. If you do the cluster analysis that we did, if you do the words course that we did, if you do the uh, principal component analysis, there are no measures of uncertainty. There's just the classification that we have or the scale that we have. For regression analysis, uh, logistic regression, etc., you do get this kind of measures of uncertainty, but we have really not discussed them in this uh, course. So beware that some models do, some models don't have this. Sometimes variations on these models do, whereas some variations of these models don't. Um, but this is a concern that you want to think about if you are drawing conclusions about a population from uh, a sample. And finally, always beware whether you're talking about prediction, description, or causal inference, and be explicit in your write-up and in your presentation of results, which of those you are trying to do. If you for, work for a company and try to understand consumer behavior, you're probably focused on prediction. You want to predict how they will behave so that the company can adapt to how consumers will behave. If you're looking at description, you're talking about more mapping out evolution of a, uh, some pattern. What I showed you about uh, Putin and Medvedev and their speeches and how this evolves over time, that is really pure description. There's not much prediction about what they might speak about. There's not much causal inference. This is a descriptive exercise. And finally, we can think about causal inference where we try to identify whether a particular factor causes a particular outcome. And then you need to be more careful uh, how you model this. You have a, a more less uh, computer driven and more human driven approach to modeling. So this goes back to the first bullet point as well. You will definitely want to start from theoretical expectations. And you have a whole different approach to modeling. Most of the models we described in this course are about prediction and description, and they are poorly um, uh, poorly designed for causal inference. Uh, the exception is the, the regression and logistic regression, um, but we did not discuss the causal inference side there much. And then that means also that, so those three things you really need to keep in mind whenever you want to think about these type of models in the future. We discussed what we covered. I also want to just briefly highlight a range of things that we did not cover, just so you're aware that it's out there and, and that you might want to look at this. We did not cover uh, conventional econometric theory, which is about uh, ordinary least squares, the estimation methods uh, for linear regression and maximum likelihood. Um, and in particular, is about all the assumptions that you are making about the data when you run these models and what happens if some of these assumptions are not true. And um, so there's a huge amount of literature around that. There's a huge amount of material around that. Any economic students and most advanced, more advanced social science, political science students will become acquainted with this. Um, but that is really for separate courses. Um, I also did not discuss Bayesian statistical inference, which is a uh, alternative to the more maximum likelihood approach, um, and which is often applied also in machine learning. Uh, a very interesting uh, topic, but a very uh, extensive topic that we have not discussed. The word fish model that we discussed last week was an example of a Bayesian model. And in fact, most, if not all, the models we discussed in this course also have their Bayesian implementations. Um, but this is much beyond the course. Uh, we have not talked much about methods for cause and inference. Um, we have not talked about experimental designs, matching, um, instrumental variables, and so forth. Um, all designed for careful cause and inference. This is not covered by the course. Um, usually, um, models in data science have to do with very large data sets and very large variation of different types of data that are all trying to be combined to, to understand, say, consumer behavior. So that also requires a lot of skills in database management 
and programming languages such as SQL that are specifically designed for uh, data access and management, and we did not cover that. Um, R is one of the two most pop popular languages among data scientists to work with, so you have a very good foundation in that. The other, and perhaps more popular, one is Python, which is a more general programming language, and we have not covered uh, generic general programming or Python. And finally, you will very often have heard the phrase big data, um, almost as an equivalent of data science. Big data really has to do that uh, one of the difference between more conventional statistical analysis and what is now fashionable in the data science is that the amount of data we have available has become so much larger. Um, and to work with extremely large data, you really need separate techniques. You cannot just open a data set in R and run a regression because the memory on your computer will be far too small. So you need alternative strategies. And there's all kinds of computational techniques, computer techniques, uh, using uh, computing clusters, using um, uh, uh, algorithms to, to sort of split up the computation into many processes that all work in parallel, etc. That are that are really a whole separate set of techniques. Data scientists normally will be also a specialist in this area, and this is really not covered by it. Um, we also did not cover anything related to domain knowledge. So remember that on one of the very first slides in the first lecture, I showed you that. Um, Data science is the mixture between computer science, statistics, and domain knowledge. We did not discuss domain knowledge. But that, of course, is what you do in all the other modules you take in the social sciences. So whether you're an economist or a uh, political scientist or a social sociologist, that's where you learn your domain knowledge. And now you can combine that with what you do in this course to uh, apply it and, and become a more fully rounded data scientist. Um, in terms of textbooks, if you're going to look later for um, other textbooks, we have roughly covered the material of a typical textbook that will have multivariate analysis in the title. We did not go into the technicalities of econometrics, which is more focused on causal inference uh, and regression techniques and their assumptions. And we have also not really worried about many of the technical, uh, both mathematical and, and programming details of uh, a data science textbook. Yeah, so here's a sort of a graph of what a, uh, a data scientist is supposed to know, what, what their skills are. So they have skills in mathematics and statistical modeling. Uh, and we covered, as you can see, quite a lot of that. We discussed machine learning and statistical modeling. We discussed supervised learning, all three examples here, decision trees, random forest, logistic regression. We discussed unsupervised learning, including clustering and dimension reduction. Uh, we did not really discuss Bayesian inference and gradient descent, which have all to do with uh, optimization algorithms or experimental designs, but we covered quite a lot of this. Um, on the right, programming, um, as I said, there's quite a bit that is not covered, like SQL and Python um, and, and relational databases or techniques for dealing with large data, big data, such as MapReduce and Hadoop. Um, but we did cover uh, R quite extensively, and we've learned a lot from that. The domain knowledge, bottom left, that is really what you get in all the other courses. And then communication and visualization has been a very important part of this course, both in terms of learning ggplot, which is a core visualization tool, but also very importantly, that all the assignments were structured around how do you communicate these findings from a data science project um, to a general audience. So I will finish there and say a little bit more about um, uh, the final assignment in the next video.